how you know and how is she cutting? How is she cutting is Irish slang for how are you getting on? And I wanna know how you're getting on with your editing. So comment down below what you're working on right now and if any of these tips help you out. So these are 10 DaVinci Resolve tips you have to know. So starting off with a quick one, you gotta get that audio balanced. This will bring your audio waveform more consistent across the audio clip. It'll also give you a nice boost to the lower levels without the louder peaks getting distorted. Essentially the optimal and most comfortable volume across the whole audio clip. Select the clip you want to normalize. And if you see here, it's really low with audio. So if you grab it, right click and hit normalize. I like either True Peak or Netflix. So I hit normalize and there you go. And you can see that, you can see the audio level, it jumped up there. And if you play it back. So we're gonna get out in some scooters. I think it's a great way to see the city. There you go. And boom, that's done. So here's a quick tip as well. You can actually batch normalize all the audio. So I hit control A and then just right click, normalize audio levels and normalize. And you can see they've done all the audio in one go. It just saves you individually doing them. I like to set a shortcut for that one. I've set mine to F12, so I literally hit Control A and then F12 and boom, and it's done. It's as easy as that. As we're speaking about batch audio hacks, my next tip is to batch crossfade all audio. This used to be constant power for anyone coming from Adobe Premiere. So over to Fairlight tab, go to your batch fade settings, ensure fade in, crossfade, and fade out are all selected. Select the type of fade you want. I have linear for the fade in, a log fade for the crossfade, and an exponential fade for the fade out. Select your frames. I have three on the fade in, two on the crossfade, and three on the fade out. If you have some crossfades added already and you don't want them overrided, leave this box unticked. If you do, give it a tick. Then you hit apply. So then you want to select the clips that you want the batch fade apply to and then hit apply batch fades. There you go. And you can see they've come up. And if you go back to your edit page and then we zoom in, they're all there. So this is perfect for the end of a project where you like need to take the harshness off one clip going into the next one. Color Space Transform. This is one for the graders coming from Premiere. So back in Premiere, before I used nodes, I used to use adjustment layers. So I would have three, one in the middle to convert the log footage to Rec 709. I'd do my corrections on the bottom layer and then dial in my look on the top. This worked great, but when I got to Resolve, I was really confused on how to apply this kind of method. With Resolve being primarily a color software as well, it actually has all the conversion LUTs from every camera you could think of. So instead of having to get the official conversion LUT off uh, your camera's manufacturer's website, it's all built into DaVinci. So firstly, get to the color tab, open up your effects up here on the right, scroll down to color space transform. I suggest adding this to your favorites because you're gonna probably use it a lot. Uh, for your input, select the camera you're using. I was using S-Log3, so it's Sony S-Gamma uh, 3 Cine, and then the input gamma is S-Log3. For the output color space, it's Rec 709 and Gamma 2.4. Uh, you can leave this set to use timeline if you have your timeline's color space set to Rec 709 in the color management tab. And there you go, it converts it perfectly and it looks great straight out of camera if you've exposed well. And if not, you can then, on your previous node, make your few adjustments. There you go, it's just so, so useful. What I love about the color space transform is if you have footage from one camera and LUTs from another camera, you can convert the color space from one camera to the other to enable the use of the LUTs you want to use specific to that camera. Position lock. This is a game changer. Yes, there's always you know, your standard lock track here and lock track there, and that's like great and all, and it has its uses. The problem with lock track is you can't continuously edit on that specific track, but with position lock, you can literally just come here, click position lock on, and then try and move your clips. You can't, and that's what's great about it. You can keep working away down along the timeline, but none of these clips will get moved. You don't want to move something in case something goes out of sync and out of wax. Two hours later, you realized you like overrid a clip that was on a track that you didn't see because it was just a monster of a timeline. So position lock is great that like you can just flick it on, keep working away without worry. So this like gives you the confidence to like just keep editing. So here's a project manager tip and oh my God, I was kicking myself when I found this out because it's such like it's a really easy one and it's a really easy one to miss. So when you see how simple it is, don't beat yourself up. It's happened to the best of us and I'd say nearly every one of us gets caught with this one. So when you open up DaVinci and you're scrolling through your nicely organized projects, click into a folder hierarchy, but oh wait, it's the wrong folder. Uh, you wanna go back, where do you click? Where do you go? Here, here. What about here? So you get frustrated and you quit the application and you start from scratch and that does it and grand. But fear not, it's right here. What? <laughs> that simple, huh? Yep, it's not very outlined and it's frustrated me. So do subscribe if that one sorted you out. 
So change color of any items. And I've got two ways for you. So these are very different ways depending on the complexity of what is needed. So let's start with the easy way. Assuming you have a fairly one colored asset, you go to the effects tab, you go to open effects, grab a color generator, uh, drop it onto your asset, come over here to the effects property, click this white box, and then you can literally change that to any color you want. This is similar to the tint function in Premiere if you're coming from Premiere as well. The next one's a little bit more tricky, but it's still super easy. So this is a lot more complex. So we have like a drone shot and it's moving outwards, a lot of movement there, the camera is tracking back. And let's just say we wanted to change the color of the ocean. So you go to the color tab, let's grab our magic mask, which is right here. Then we wanna to go to the end of the clip and then go up to the ocean where we wanna change the color and we wanna just start selecting the area to track. Now, see the way the eyedropper with the little plus is there? You have to make sure that's on. And the way you do that is down here. Once you've done that, you hit track forwards and backwards. In this case, because we're at the end, it's just tracking back. Once the tracker finishes, what you wanna do is come over here to the color warper tool, and then you wanna change this U resolution to eight. Then you can go back up to the image with the eyedropper, and then you can just click and drag. And if you look down at the color warper below, this mimics that, or you can do it down here as well. You can see the way the ocean has completely changed its color. And then when we go to play it back, it's tracked absolutely perfectly. The magic mask worked perfect. It's so easy. And then like, you know, you can literally change it whatever color you wanted. Two easy ways to change the color. So batch export, oh my God, this is so handy for stock footage. If I was to think back on all the hours I spend on Premiere making sub clips to upload to stock websites, yeah, oh God, it just makes me sick. So what you wanna do is trim your clips as you want them. And let's just say they're all the individual clips that you wanted. Come over here to the deliver page. And then what you're gonna do is click on individual clips to set your name, batch, export. Perfect. And then over to file. And what we wanna do is custom name. So use unique file names. And then a prefix or suffix. I use suffix because the numbers are at the end then. And then you hit add to render queue and render one. And there you have it. Uh, you'll have a whole folder full of individual clips ready for stock sites and it's just so much quicker than Premiere. So, next step, drag and drop. You start your new project, you're ready to get going, you're ready to organize your clips and you're ready to import. So let's say if you click into here and you want this folder and then you drag it down into your media pool. Uh, oh, okay, what's going on there? It's literally all the clips I have, but it's not organized and that's not what I want. I want organization because I organize these files outside the software and I want to keep that same folder hierarchy. So if we grab the folder and we bring it down here into the left by master and then drop it, it keeps the same folder structure that you organized. And you can do it with multiple folders, so it's just, it's, it's perfect. This one's audio slip. So we've all been there, you're doing a music video, you try to sync up via the waveform and it doesn't work, and there's no clapboard on the day, so you have to do it manually. Get a clapboard. So you line it up and it looks good, but it's not perfect, and it's like a frame or two out, and you move it and then it's too far away and then you move it back and then it's too far back the other way. And this is because video is in frames but audio is in milliseconds. But there's a handy feature called audio slip. Come up here to trim slip audio and then you can do one frame forward or one frame reverse. So see the way that went one frame this way? So that will literally time that up to be perfect. So the shortcut is alt left or alt right or it's alt comma or alt full stop. Now you can get that audio perfectly aligned. Oh, you've been editing away in a complete flow state. You realize you've absolutely loads of clips on your timeline. It's all great, it's all what you want, but there's gaps all over the timeline. Fortunately, there's a feature called delete gaps. So you go to edit here and delete gaps. I have my map to keyboard shortcut G for group. I think it was from Premiere, but I hit control A and then G and all my clips are then nice and tidied up. So you got excited to edit, you got stuck straight into the cut and you left your media bins all disorganized. You wanna find your timelines, but you're having trouble deciphering where they are in the project. Your video clips, your sound effects, they're all in the way and it's all looking a bit messy. Come up to these three dots, show smart bins. We wanna make sure that's clicked on. Over here, you'll see a timelines tab up here. Click it and all your timelines will always be here to access with ease anytime you wanna get them. By the way, I'm Tom, nice to meet you. I film and edit videos professionally for a living. If you've made it this far and you enjoy the video, subscribing would really make the difference to me and a like goes a long way to ensure that I keep creating these videos. So thank you so much for watching, I really do appreciate it and I hope you got something from these tips. Talk to you later.